Thanks for joining me as we finish up the build on this Chevy Express van. Today we're working on the electrical or completing the electrical. Once you've met your needs of how to sleep, how to eat, and carry water with you, which is basic camping, many people start with something such as a, a Jackery. And a Jackery has a battery. It has a way to charge the battery, and then it has a way to consume the electricity. And that's the basics of any electrical system. So stick with me today. We're gonna to show you how to design a basic system. And I'll also show you how to make basic cable connections, crimp on connections and things like that. I think today's video will be very informative to for you. Wait, stop. Don't click the off button yet. I know I've got a flip chart on YouTube and that's like a, a deal killer, but take a moment, let's, let's get through this. One of the first things you need to do when you're planning out your van is just decide what your needs are. And my Land Cruiser sitting over in my driveway, all I needed to do was run my refrigerator. So I just needed a small battery and a way to charge it. And that was one system. Some people can just start with the self-contained Jackery. Some people need something like we designed for this van that's a little bit more robust that'll run an induction cooker, things like that. And then you got over the top vans with multiple batteries, onboard generators, things like that. So let's go through what we decided for this van. We had some simple 12 volt loads. We had lighting, USB. We had a lot of electronics to charge because Bev's a YouTuber. We talked about doing an induction cooktop. We kind of knew what we wanted to do. She has a fridge, so let's get started. First thing you have to do is energy has to produce, be produced somehow. And Beverly has the option to take advantage of three. She's got the alternator in the van. She's got solar, and then she's got house power when she's mood stocking. So we can take power three different ways. And to combine it, went online and we found out that the Renogy DC to DC charger does a very good job of that. It handles seamlessly the input from an alternator and the input from a solar with no effort on anybody's part. And we found a way to take the house power through the converter or battery charger that was already installed in the van to place that uh, at, the in, at the Renogy as well. So the Renogy takes power of different loads, amperages, you know, things like that, and puts it into a stream that the battery will accept. Because lithium batteries charge, you know, kind of in odd ways. They can consume power really fast. So they're tough on the alternator in the van, things like that. So the energy, the Renogy charger is like a smart device. It takes a lot of the confusion out of it for a van designer or a DIY, DIY installer. So we've captured energy. We found a way to put it into the battery so that we can store it. Now we have it for later. And it's really that simple. It's just load the battery with some energy and how are we gonna consume it? There's two ways to consume it. We can take it straight off the battery to a 12 volt panel for anything that's 12 volts. Uh, most USB outlets are 12 volts. A lot of your lighting is 12 volts. The refrigerator is 12 volts. So a lot of the items can take just the raw power off the battery and just consume it. We then have household appliances like the induction cooktop. Uh, you know, if somebody wanted to use a microwave, a uh, the laptop chargers are generally 110 as well. So we have some 110 volt loads that we need to tr uh, convert off of the battery. This is 12 volts DC. We need to convert that to AC and we're gonna use an inverter. And that inverter will produce 110 volt household power for us to consume. And this is really as complicated as the, as the project is. Taking power that exists, finding it away with a charger to put it into your battery, and then finding a way to take it back out, either directly through a 12 volt panel or an inverter. Now there's details within this. How do you make these cables between everything? How do you size the cables? And that's all easy to come up with on the internet. I'm gonna show you how to make cables today. And there's also online calculators that you'll plug in what the load is, how how far you need to run it because distance in cable is a big deal. It'll tell you what wire size to use. So get online, there's a lot of resources, but don't be too scared of a 12 volt system in your van. 
Okay, I want to talk uh, the electrical, how we're coming off the main battery. What we've done today is we've taken this uh, black and red wire, and that's a four gauge wire, and we're coming from the main battery, and we're gonna go all the way back to the DC to DC charger, and I'll show you how we ran that. But one of the important things is, is we have added a circuit breaker here. Uh, that's important in the fact that if any of these wires were to get chafed, rubbed, hot, you know, I tried to keep it away from any of the exhaust or anything like that, but, you know, in any case, if the wire could get compromised on the way back and it gets shorted out against the vehicle, we want that breaker to blow. We don't want to start a fire and burn down the van. So you can just press the test button, that little yellow tab right there shows that the breaker's been uh, opened or blown and that will stop the uh, electricity to the back. So if there's ever any issue, Bev can look at that and see if the breaker's blown. From there, that, that red cable extends over and joins the battery right here. So let me show you how we ran it back underneath the van. So I am now directly underneath the battery and I ran the cables down here. That's roughly uh, beside the, the radiator. I tried to stay you know, out of the engine compartment as much as possible for heat. Then I found a nice uh, cross member uh, in front of the radiator. Now, now I'm over at the uh, driver's side frame rail and I found a large uh, wiring loom that goes to the back. And one of the things you want to do when you're running wire is to make sure that you don't put it in a position where it can get too hot and melt. And, uh, you know, you can assume if there's some factory wiring there, then it's probably a safe place. So here you see I've come back uh, along that frame rail and joined this wiring loom right here. So that's a nice, good, safe place to go. And then right here where that... Uh, AC line was, there was a hole in the floor right there. And uh, we went up into the body of the van uh, at that location. So here we've exited the floor of the van uh, with the cable. So I've now uh, got the breaker set so that the wire is energized. All right, let's test the connection here. Okay, we've got 12.17 volts, which is roughly what I got off of the battery when I measured it uh, just a few minutes ago. So this is good. I'm glad to wrap up the interior electrical on the van. It was really pretty quick, uh, surprisingly quick. Normally things take longer than I thought. So we've got two Anderson connectors down here. This one right here runs to the battery or from the battery uh, back to the uh, 12 volt panel. And this one is, this one right here is the converter that will charge the battery. Uh, next thing I did was I added some uh, USB ports into the existing 12 volt panel. So I was able to salvage some uh, existing plastic pieces that were already part of the conversion. So it looks fairly stock. You can't really see where they're at. Let me show you. So I've got the, I hid the uh, USB ports right here in this uh, black uh, panel right here. And then I've got another one over on the other side uh, right here. The nice thing about these are that they have that little rubber cap because you'll find a lot of your uh, USB ports have a little blue LED that will keep you awake all night long. So I like that these have the little cap on them. So you don't need uh, a bunch of fancy equipment to make good connections. Uh, I've just crimped this one here and you basically you get good quality lugs. You trim the outer sheath. Make sure to put the lug on there and don't leave a bunch of uh, strands hanging out. And then I use a little uh, hammer crimper. Uh, yeah, $12.99. You know, I have access in the shop to some other ones, but this one's just, to be honest, this one's easy. It's, it's, it seems to hold the lug while you're trying to do it. Then you can position the cable with your hand and then just 
to wax. And then that's quite strong. So I have just a little butane torch that I keep in my toolbox even when I'm on the road for things. And uh, warm it up a little here with without burning it. One, it, one reason you would do this is it eliminates as much of the exposed metal as possible. So now this, this lug here is only under the bolt that you're actually wanting to make connection to on a bus bar or a piece of equipment. All that other copper and metal that was sticking out there is now covered up and not exposed. So it makes it neat, clean, but it's also a little bit of safety. So. So now here I am installing the same cable I just made. Uh, I'm using bus bars so that you don't have so many connections on one bolt. You can't put four big uh, copper lugs on one bolt and stack them up. That's not uh, a proper way to do that. So a bus bar can, can take multiple negatives or multiple positives and hook it up to one connection. So that's what I'm doing right here. This bus bar here is for the big loads. So this is coming from the alternator. It's coming from the charger back over there. It's also going to be uh, one of the negatives going to the battery. So that's the three here. Then I've connected it all back to the negative on the DC to DC charger. This negative bus right here is for all of the solar inputs coming in. I've got three different solars coming in. And then I will connect this one right here back over to this negative bus so that all of our negatives are now tied together. So you want them snug to make sure you get a good connection but you know you don't have to crank that so tight that you rip the uh, the lug out of there. I was always taught to put the lug directly onto the bus bar and any washer should be above that so that the lug is making a direct connection to the bus bar and you don't have a bunch of washers in between it. So I'm not going to bore you with every connection that I'm making. I'll show you the end result, but I try to keep the things as neat as possible and uh, organized so that, you know, you can work on them later and also identify what you're doing. So, okay, now we're going to make some uh, different kind of cables. This is called an Anderson connector and you have to crimp these, uh, blades onto the end of your cable and then assemble this connector and it's it's easy to do so this is positive and this is negative so we're going to want our wire just like it is here with the red going to the positive the black to the negative and these have a very specific orientation so as you can see there's a um, a little bump it must be aligned so that this this hook or this bump is facing up to the square part of the uh, Anderson connector not this back side align the connector up and see how much I need to strip off of it I have a fancy little stripper for all my small cables but for the big one I don't all right so laying it this way I want to make sure that the uh, this notch is up I'm going to place this into the uh, the crimper and give it a whack. So that makes a good connection. We'll do the same for the black one. All right, so I want to line these up. I've got that up, this up, and let's give it another whack. Now we don't need any heat shrink here because this is going to be buried in this plastic connector. So let's see if this lines up. We're going to take these in and you just slide them in here till they click. So that one went in easy. And so now you can see the connectors in there. This will made up with a mirror image plug in the van. At each corner of the uh of the bed platform, we've installed an Anderson connection to uh, take solar from the Jackery uh, solar panels. 
Uh, we've got this at the back door and both of the side doors. These two large connections are going to tie into the van. This one is going to feed the 12 volt panel that's already in the van. And yes, that's overkill. I don't know why I grabbed cable that big to do that, but I did. And this is going to come from the battery charger or converter when we're hooked up to shore power. And that one is appropriately sized. That's, that carries roughly 50 amps. This is another wire for solar at the one of the side doors. Here uh, we're taking you know, extra precaution with the inverter. We've got a 300 amp fuse down here and that's what was specified and a battery disconnect. It's much better to turn the battery on and off rather than undo the connections if you ever need to change a fuse or you want to disable the inverter. Uh, it's in off position now. That would be on. And then as soon as you turn that, that breaks the circuit and everything can, is safe. I've got these wires just hanging loose because we're waiting on our battery. The inverter is now in place, bolted down. We've got our connections made right here. And this is kind of the hub of all the charging that comes into the vehicle. Uh, this large gauge uh, orange cable here is coming from the alternator. And the lighter gauge, this cable is coming from the charger that's built in when we're doing shore power. And then here's solar again. So all the solar meets here on this bus and then this wire here feeds the solar input. The input right here is from the car. And this input here runs back to the battery and all the negative buses are connected here. So that's how we've got it set up. So to wrap things up, safety is important. You always want to make sure that you operate within your own capabilities. You need to do your own research on the internet. You know, watch videos like this so that you can see how to build things and design. That's, that's my main focus. That's my area of expertise is how to design small things in small spaces. Uh, I'm giving you a link to uh, an excellent uh, YouTube channel for electricity, but there's also other carpentry videos, there's car repair videos. As a DIY person at home, you need to reach out and look at all the resources you have available so that you yourself are safe. You know, don't shock yourself, don't burn yourself, don't cut your finger off. Just, you know, if you're going to do this yourself, do a good job and operate within your capabilities. So good luck with your own build and have fun.